for cattle, I've got one chart. It's the exact, the exact same chart that we ended the, the wheat with. The fact that we've got precip hitting, uh, hitting the plains here. Uh, as far as snow totals, the uh, general forecasted range was anywhere four to eight inches in portions of, uh, of Nebraska and portions of northern Kansas. Actual totals are coming in a little over a foot in some areas here. So the bottom line, we, quite a few uh, areas we've seen are receiving quite a bit of snow here on this little system. Keep in mind, as far as snow in the plains and the, for this whole winter outlook, generally each winter we get about two or three snowstorms hitting the plains, which are market moving events. Generally, you, uh, they last at least two or three days, these typical snow systems. Uh, the key concern here is production and weight gains. Uh, cattle, if it's a light snow, which, uh, which they get a chance to move off the lot, it's usually not that much of an issue. If it gets a chance to melt, so for instance, if uh, we see temperatures warm up and then get back to cold again after that, and they get their, uh, their coats all wet and you see some freezing and icicles on the coats, things like that, you will have not just actually a uh, loss in, in terms of uh, actual uh, weight gains, but you actually have a net loss in the animal itself. They'll lose more weight trying to keep their current heat uh, body, uh, body temps up. So we can see a significant production loss in terms of tonnage hitting the market due to these systems. And keep in mind with these systems, these cattle that go in the lots here in the fall and winter, these guys are feeding all the way through early summer. So this can impact beef production not just right now or next week, but actually all the way through June and July and early part of August. So that's one thing why we have to watch these systems closely here. But right now, as long as we have this weather system saying uh, Nebraska, Kansas, and, 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 uh, and those guys getting some, some snow, we've got a premium in this market here for right now uh, in, uh, on the cattle here. Over on the hogs, I just have one chart to put up here as well, and that's this corn to hog chart. You can kind of notice that uh, there's a slight correlation here, as you guys can see. The bottom line with these, uh, these hogs, these guys are very, very concerned in the industry for corn costs, and if we do see uh, some changes on the uh, on the corn cost issue here. In other words, a second move above the six dollar price range, you're going to see some liquidation, a secondary liquidation occur on the uh, beef breeding herd. And that also means less pork production in the far future. So if you want to, if you ever get bullish on corn, you think you've got a second leg up in prices, then buy the hogs, and I would specifically buy these far far to herds, October and December contracts. Keep in mind, there's about a ten month lag between production plans and actual production is market.